So today I'm going to put together another iCraft kit. This one's called the Box Scrapbook. And just like the other kits, you have a picture on the outside of what this might look like. And on the back, you have the dimensions of each piece, which, quite frankly, I find almost useless. Now, in this particular kit, it did not come with instructions. Some of them do, some of them don't. But what it does come with is the ability to create three of these scrapbook boxes. One of them in black, one in craft, and one in white. So I did go to the iCraft uh, YouTube channel and I did watch the tutorial on how to put this box together. Um, the tutorial does give you some idea, however I do find it a little bit confusing. So I'm glad they gave me three of these in a kit because I was able to experiment on a couple of them and I'm going to put one of them together for you and show you how to do this and this is my method for putting it together and it slightly varies from what the iCraft people show on their YouTube channel um, I think mine might make it a little bit easier I hope so as I said in the kit you get three colors you get black you get white and you get craft. Now the craft one I haven't put together yet but these two I have. So I'll just show you what they look like when you open them up and then we'll come back to the craft one and I'll show you step by step how to put it together. And let's for the sake of visibility on the camera use the black one. Now of course right now the one thing I have found with most of their kits is when you have them finished they don't actually stay closed. It takes some time um, for them to get sort of meld it into their shape. Now what I'll do off camera uh, before I decorate this is I will put a couple of elastic bands around across it and down and that seems to help keep it in shape. Also I will have to design some sort of enclosure for this and I'm thinking right now as much as I'd like to put a magnetic closure on this flap and I might do that yet I still think it's going to need something that goes around the box to hold the sides together probably a ribbon but we'll worry about that when we get to that stage so let me show you what it looks like when it opens up so it is called a box scrapbook so of course here's your outside cover and it folds out like this and you see right off the bat you have a lot of real estate happening in this and when we come to decorating it, uh, this will be a little bit clearer. One thing I want you to notice is on this flap on the front, and you'll see these on the inside, and I'll point them out in a minute. I don't know if this is showing up. There's a hole. I have no idea what this is for. Um, is it for a clasp to go through, but they didn't put a ma matching one up there. You could cut it through. You could do some sort of a clasp in there. But I'm really not sure what the hole's for. So ignore it unless you can think of a way to use it. So basically it opens up just like this. Another one here and these and these and then you have these fold out pieces. Again, you can see they have the little holes in here. Now I may have put this on upside down. Maybe I should have flipped it over so those holes are the same way because if they were, I suppose you might be able to rig up some sort of ribbon to hold it closed. I don't know. Um, I guess that's left to your creativity. And these flaps that are in here as well have these little holes too, but they're useless because they get glued down. So we'll talk a little bit more about how to glue these down in a second. But essentially, you can see you have the base here for a cute little boxed scrapbook, a scrapbook that comes in its own little box and essentially let's let me get the flaps together here you have a lot of real estate on this for pictures or whatever that's an outside flap, I think this is an inside it takes a minute to figure this out I don't know if there is a right or wrong way to fold this up, whatever works for you that works for me. So there we have it. So it is kind of cute. Um, and like I said, in the kit you get three of these. So that's not bad. I paid $10.99 Canadian for this kit at my local uh, scrapbooking store. So that's a pretty good deal. So what I've done is I've taken the craft pieces and I've actually organized them by the side, by the uh, 
width of their spines. And she does, um, the woman who does the eye craft uh, videos, does recommend this. So the first thing you might do when you take it out of the package is organize each of these pieces. Now this piece with the funny curved top, I'm going to call this base piece and I put the number one on here. I don't know if you can see that. I just did it in pencil. I'm going to be covering this up later anyways. But I found that if I numbered them first, it did help with the assembly, getting them in the correct order. Now, she talks about the spine and it's this wide piece, especially on this base piece, you see. So if this was one piece and you're folding it up like that, that would be your spine. And that's one and a half inches in size. And that's the largest spine in this set. Keep that in mind because that's important in the assembly. Then you need to organize your pieces according to spine size. So that's one and a half inches. Your next spine size is, um, oh, there's another one that's one and a half inches. Okay. So this one's one and a half. So let's just set those all aside according to the spine size. So I'm talking about this piece between the two score lines. Okay. Folds up like that. Okay. So those are both one and a half inches. The next one down is one. Oh, that's another one. That's one and a half inch too. Okay. You can see why I'll come to the numbering in a second, but I'm just organizing by spine. So those ones, all the spines on these pieces are one and a half inches. Then we come down to one inch and there are three one inch spines. Again, this area in here. So one, two, three. Now you'll notice that two of these are the same size and one is slightly smaller and that's important. So we'll set those aside. Then the next spine size is half an inch. And we have three pieces that have half inch spines. But you see two of them are very much the same. And this one's a little shorter piece. So we'll set those aside. So essentially we have three groupings according to their spines. Uh, one and a half inches, one inch, half inch. Okay, let's just set these aside for a, se a second. Now, this is our base piece. We start with that. So then we're going to go to our other two pieces that have the same spine width, one and a half inches. And I've numbered the longer of the two as the number two and the other one as three. And this is essentially where they're going to go. They're going to go on either side here. Now, it doesn't matter whether this is at the top or at the bottom, but I'm using this for my orientation, putting the one with the hole in the top at the top of my production here. I've already put my two-sided tape on all the pieces. So you flip them over and on this piece on the edge, not on the spine, but on this other little piece that comes out from that, you put your two-sided tape. Now you can use wet glue if you wish. It'll give you a little bit more wiggle room, but I prefer double-sided tape. And I didn't have double-sided tape that's wide enough to cover one and a half inches. So I just used half inch and I used um, quarter inch and put two pieces down. And so I've gone, done this on all of my pieces, as you can see, they're all done. And now, and I've also varnished them. I used my bone folder to give them a good varnish to make sure they're sticking down. And now we can put the pieces together. Now, I have numbered all the pieces. So let's, before I start sticking it down, show you. So you're basically going from largest spine to smallest spine, and you're almost going around in a circle. So this is piece one, this will be piece two, piece three. Now we move into, those are the one and a half inch spines. Now we're moving into the one inch spines. So we have four, five, six, and then we go to seven, which is the three, Next, the next three pieces, which have half inch spines, so seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's essentially how we're going to go around this. So just let me put those all back. And so, in a sense, once you get going, it goes fairly fast. There's seven, six, five. Four, three, and two. Okay. So let's just start here. I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit by folding the 
creases back over. And you'll want to fold the creases uh, or score lines as soon as you get it out of the package before you do anything else. Or you could put your tape on and then score it up to you. The uh, more you score it, the better things are going to fit together. Okay, so we're going to take the tape off of piece number two, the protective tape. And the best way to do this, I find, is I just turn it this way. And I just fold that flap under so the sticky side is here. And I'm just going to line it up between these two inner score lines that mark the beginnings of the spine on either side of the base piece. And just eyeball it to center it between those lines, but get it close to the edge without going over of the base. Give it a good varnishing. And then I'm just going to flip this around and I'm going to take piece number three and I'm going to do the same thing. So let's take our tape off. Let's just fold that under. And the same thing, I'm just eyeballing it, trying to keep it centered with the other piece I put on as well as between the two score lines. If you're off a little bit, it's not going to really make any difference. Okay. So here we have base piece, piece two, piece three. Now we're going to put on piece four. Now I've been working with two and three are both one and a half inches uh, in size. Now we're working with piece four and let me check my model to make sure I'm getting all of these in the right spot. I, I pre-did this with the white one and wrote the numbers on it so I wouldn't screw up. The more times you do it, the easier it's going to get. Yes, that's where the four goes. Okay, so four is going. So I've got one, two, three, piece four. And now I'm working with the uh, one inch spines. So let's take our tape off. Now this is one of these pieces that has the little cutout rectangle, which I have no idea. She never spoke of the, these at all in the video. There's on the back of the package, they don't even show those holes cut in. So I suspect that they may have had a purpose when they first designed this kit, but then decided not to use these, but they never adjusted their machine that cuts this. So again, I'm just gonna fold it over. I'm gonna turn this orientation this way. Now this is going to go inwards. So I'm lining it up with the score line. And this one you will uh, be able to center it very easily on the score lines on the other sides as well as the bottom. So you can see when you get this tape down, you have this hole right here that is of, of no purpose whatsoever. Now I could have put the tape all the way across. For example, I'll show you here in another piece. See there's my hole, but I put the tape on either side of it. I didn't want to go into the hole because then I'll have sticky stuff hanging out from the hole and these pieces would stick to that. So I didn't do that. So there we have base one, piece two, piece three, piece four. So piece five is also a one inch spine and it's going to go right here on top of piece two. And again, let me double check and I am correct. Okay, I'm using the white one as my reference because I've already worked this out, but I just want to make sure because this is only the third one that I've made. So we're taking off our backing tape. And again, I'm just going to orient this so I can see the edge. And I'm lining it up with the first score line on the base piece. And down it goes and varnished. Now we come to piece six. It still has a one inch spine, still, still working on the one inch spines, and it's going to go right here. So you see, I'm doing this in sort of a clockwise fashion, which is not what she showed in the video. I suppose you could put these in any order you wish, but you do have to have the spines 
uh, descending in size. So you start with the widest spine out here, you're moving down to uh, the smallest spines. Because if you don't, then it's not going to close properly. Okay, let's flip this around. This is P7, so we're going to P7 here, so we're going to put that on top of piece 3. Again, we have a piece here with one of those little holes that we have no idea what those are for. If anybody's got any ideas, you can write me a comment below. Line it up. And you can see this goes together fairly quickly. Now, let's just orient it back here to the top. And let's just review. Base 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven. Now we come to piece eight, eight, and that's one of these big pieces. And piece eight is going to go at the top here, and piece nine is going to go at the bottom here. So I've got my tape ready to go. I'm just going to orient it. Again, Make sure you put your pieces on the inside, not the outside of the base. And let's flip it around. And the last piece, which is piece nine. there we have it. So let's, uh, I always use the piece that's got the little cutout as my orientation piece. I'm going to put that down towards the bottom. Now, to fold it together. Okay, you take these long pieces and it goes in and you fold it, fold it sort of Well, not that way. Okay, let me get this right. Um, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Well, you could do it that way. It doesn't really matter. If you don't like these holes, I think I'll be covering these up anyways. But let's do it the way they did it. So I need to go... That's not it. Okay, I'm, I'm having a little trouble here. Let me just get this right. Okay. That one that way, that way. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but it's got to get in side here. Okay, so as you see here, you have a little bit of a spine. Essentially, this is sort of like a little booklet within the box. Okay. So we can get this one. Oops. Okay. So I solved my own problem with the little hole thing. On the other boxes, I had those on the outside. I have these on the inside. Since I'm going to cover them up, it doesn't really matter. Now, there may be a little overlap here, and that is fine. So, next comes flap. Okay, seven isn't, you do have to do a little bit of manipulation here. This is where your bone folder comes in really handy. I don't know what I did here, but I must have got it off. A little bit. I ended up overlapping one of the other score lines, and so this isn't folding neatly, but I'm making it work. When in doubt, fudge it. Okay, so that flap is narrower than this flap, so flap seven in first, then eight and nine. 
and then let's do three, five, four, six. Really, it's up to you. Oops. I think I'll leave that one out. That one goes in. That one will go in. You got to play with it, people. This one goes in. This one goes over. And you can decide whether you want the fancy piece on the outside, like that. What I mean by that is a little curve, probably. I think it's cuter with that in the outside. But there you go. So we've got our box all together. Now, as I said, I'm going to put some rubber bands around this. Let me show you what I mean. I have a couple of rubber bands right here. And because it wants to keep opening up, I'm just going to put these rubber bands And I'm just going to let it sit for a day with those around that, and that may shape it in a little better. Okay? So, as I said, you get three of these. Let's just uh, fold these in. You can see here how I got these kind of screwed around, but again, I'm going to cover those up so that doesn't bother me. That in there, that one in there, that in there. That one in there, that one in there. Okay, there we go. So, you get three of these boxes for a fairly reasonable price. And once you've got one together, it's not too hard to put the other two together. So, um, I hope this helps you with this, and in our next segment, we're going to talk about uh, doing the basic decorating of each of the pages in terms of getting down some background paper. So, now that we've put the box scrapbook together, I want to talk about how to do some basic decorating of it. And what I mean by that is adding your background papers. Now, although this is fairly simple, it can get very complex and confusing because there are quite a few different pages that you're working with, both the front and the back. So I want to show you the method that I used to organize uh, what I want it to put together. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for a moment and I'm just going to take you to this one. This is my prototype. Now if you remember in uh, the package there were three uh, box scrapbooks that came in the kit. So you made three different ones, a white one, a black one, and a craft one. So I took the white one and I used my Cricut to cut out my background papers for each of the panels. And then I save those as files on my Cricut for when I want to cut my decorative papers. This did get a little confusing, however. First of all, I went to the back of the package and looked at the dimensions. And I'll just show you that. Here's the package in the package back, and it has the dimensions, but these are not accurate, I found. Um, I'm not sure how they have measured what's on here, but they do not correspond exactly with the actual uh, box. So I discarded that and took out a ruler and measured the pages myself. And on this particular one, to keep me organized, I cut the... Um, pages out, the background papers, just out of black cardstock, and then I wrote with a, a white uh, Signa Ball pen the dimensions on each of these flaps so I knew what I needed to cut. Now you'll notice, I'll talk about this in a minute, so you can see in here I have all the pages marked. Now some things that I did a little differently uh, with the final version of this from this prototype, and that's what I'll call it a prototype. Uh, what I did was, first of all, I rounded all of the corners of the papers, uh, the background papers. I just like the look of that. That's not necessary. You don't have to do it, but 
Another reason why I did do it, besides it looked pretty, is the fact that the actual foundation pages themselves on many of these, on the outside ones anyways, had already been rounded. So I just want to keep it uh, in the same style. The other thing too is, you'll notice here, I don't have my paper going all the way across the spine. Now there's a couple of ways I could have handled this. Um, at first I thought, well, I don't mind this little piece showing up, but on the outside of the box you have it showing up too. So that's not very good. It doesn't look finished. So what I did was I adjusted my measurements so that I cut one piece of cardstock that would cover both the spine of each page and the whole page itself. And then all I had to do was take a ruler and score down the line uh, where the fold is. And I could see just because I cut these a quarter of an inch smaller than the actual page, so I'd have a border, I could see the score lines, and I just put my ruler along those and went over my bone, fold, bone folder a couple of times, and that gives me the crease. Um, another way you could do it is make these two separate pieces. You could have a separate piece of cardstock covering the spine and a separate one for the flap. It's up to you, whatever you would like to do. I thought it would save me a little bit of time if I did it this way. Plus, I find that it does reinforce the spines, uh, or the score lines, actually, because these are getting folded back and forth a lot, and they could crack through. Um, and that's good. I just spit on it. Okay, don't do that. All right, so that's how this my prototype all went together. Now, I was thinking about how I was going to hold this shut, and, um, oops, make sure I fold it up right. Okay, just give me a second here. All right, here we go. Now, of course, doing it as a prototype like this, you don't have to, but I just wanted to make sure that I had my cuts right in my Cricut for this. And I did have to do some adjusting because I did make a few mistakes here and there. And here's another example. You can see that this outward part did not get covered in my other version that I'll show you in a minute with the actual papers, uh, background papers on it, I did cover that. Um, so just let me get this shut up properly here. Okay, now one other thing. This particular flap you can see has this little curve in it. So I couldn't really program that into the Cricut. Maybe you can, but I'm not clever enough to figure out how to do that. So I just cut it out as a square panel and then I used this as a template and just drew the line, traced the line onto my cardstock and cut it out from there. And that seemed to work okay. Um, you have a lot of surface to cover on this. And of course, keeping it closed, I could have on the back of it buried a piece of ribbon underneath it and just pulled it up like I've done on previous projects and tied it into a bow. But I thought I'd do something different so I created a little belly band out of a couple of strips of paper and I've already written my dimensions and my measurements on this so when I programmed them into the Cricut I would get it right and I would know where to fold and that just slides over this and it keeps everything secure. Now on the final version I intend to embellish that by putting something up here in the center of it. I don't know what yet, but that'll be for the next segment. So now that I had my prototype, I was able to cut out my papers and decorate the box. So you can see here, uh, I picked some Graphic 45 paper. It's called, let me just look. It comes from this pad, which is an older pad from Graphic 45. And it, it was called Botanical Bella. Botanica Bella. And it's kind of a nice paper pack. I have used some of this before. And there's elements in here that I think I can use as um, embellishments when I do the embellishing part of this. But right now I just have the basic papers on this. Let me move this out of the way. So here it is with the background papers on it. There's my belly uh, belt or belly band, sorry. So that just slides off. And then you can see I chose the uh, papers to make this two different colors here. And it just opens up as the other one did. Now this particular, uh, they call it a box scrapbook, 
has a lot of real estate in it, as you can tell. And it is going to take you some time just to do this part of it. And it's going to take some time to do the embellishing. And that's why I did not do a process video for this showing you how I attached all these papers and cut them. I think we all know how to cut papers to fit something like this. Uh, it, it might be better to put your papers on this when, before you assemble the album. But because I want to show you how to assemble the album, I didn't bother to do that. Um, it's not that difficult to do it once the box is assembled. Uh, it's up to you what your preferences are. Uh, I do have a few little gaps in here, which I might just put some washi tape on when I get to the embellishment stage of it. And of course, you can see all of my background papers have had their corners rounded. And I went around the edges of the papers and of the foundation pieces with some brown uh, ink. Uh, just to give it a bit of more distressed and finished look. Um, anything else that I did with this? Well, the only problem that I ran into was keeping my cut pieces straight. So instead of cutting them all at one time and then placing them in here, I did it in sections. I started with the outside of the box first and worked from flap to flap to flap. That way I kept my papers straight. Otherwise, you might not know, because you don't have the measurements written on each panel, where they're supposed to go. Because some of these measurements are very close to each other. For example, some of my measurements were 5 by 5.25 inches, and another one might be 5 by 5.5 inches. And when you just look at them, uh, without taking a measurement, you can get pieces mixed up. So I found it was easier just to do it in small little batches, um, you know, one flap at a time sort of a thing. I did use double-sided tape to hold these down, but you could use wet glue. Um, you do want to use an adhesive, though, that is fairly strong because, again, there's going to be another layer of embellishments on top of all these pages, and if you give it to somebody as a gift or you're showing it to somebody, it is going to be opened and closed a lot. So you don't want any of your pages falling uh, off. So that's how I decorated this particular box. Scrapbook box, as it's called. Now make sure I get the pages in the right way. That one has to go down that way. Then these ones go this way. I mean, the more times you do this, the less problems you're going to have in closing it up. Um, that one's, yep, yeah, see, you got to look at your spines. Uh, see, this one doesn't have a spine. This one does, but it's a small one. Eh, that's not where it goes. It's the same size as, oh yeah, I see what I've done. Yep, yeah, the more times you fold it, the better, the easier it's going to get. Things are just going to fall right into place. That one goes over that way. And this one goes this way. Another thing about um, using the papers in this, uh, the background papers, is that it makes your box a little stronger. Okay, I'm still not getting this quite right here. What am I doing wrong? Okay, look at the size of these. One goes up that way. That one goes this way. That way. This one comes over, over, and that one comes down. There you go. And then, of course, this is the belly band that holds everything together. Now, you can see that I've got a little bit of stuff popping out over the edges here. That'll just come with time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rubber band around this. Now, I could have made the belly band a little bit more snug. But I figure that once I get some more embellishments inside it, I need some expansion room, and that'll tighten it all up too, and that's going to make everything stay together a little better. I think I would just have to score that uh, a little bit better as well to make it stay in. But anyways, that's the stage we're at now. And so in the next segment, I'm going to show you how I'm going to embellish this particular box scrapbook. So, now it's time to embellish 
the box scrapbook. Um, as you can see, I've already done that. And I decided to do that all off camera because it's a little tedious watching people glue down pieces of paper. And I think everybody is quite capable of gluing down pieces of paper. But what I am going to do is take you through this little box, now this decorated, and talk about the different ways that I decorated it, the different ways I used embellishments. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice something on here, different from the one I showed you before. I had a belly band on that one before. But I decided I would actually install a magnet instead, and I'll show that to you in a moment, run the belly band, because the belly band was kind of loose, and just one of those pieces that I think over time would fall off, you'd lose it. I don't think it's necessary, not when you have magnets. But before I show you the magnets and other things about this box, what I want to show you is the paper set that I used. And as you know, I use for my background papers, uh, Graphic 45s, Botanical, Botanic Bella series. And I've developed all my embellishments inside this box from this paper pad. And this was the Deluxe Collector's Edition, so it also came with some uh, punch-out chipboard pieces as well. And I'll point those out to you when I show you the book. Um, the one thing about sticking to one paper pad is all of your embellishments, all your background papers are all going to coordinate. So you don't have to go off and look for bits and pieces in your stash uh, that might match up with other bits and pieces that you've used. It's all contained in one pad. Also, you will see that I've still given this uh, the pages a 3D look with only using paper products. So let's take a look at what I did here to the box. So this is the outside of the box, and right off the bat you can see that I've decorated the cover, and I've done some layering and clustering here. These are elements that came from that paper pad. I just fussy cut them in some cases. Uh, in other cases, I rounded the corners. You'll see that inside with my corner rounder. Um, I tuck things underneath different elements, and I raise some elements up with uh, pop dots or dimensional squares, whichever you prefer. Uh, as far as adhesive is concerned, I used two kinds of adhesive. I used uh, double-sided tape. Most of the time I used double-sided tape. But for some of these other elements that uh, are raised or were made from chipboard, I used the good old clear Gorilla Glue. My glue of choice. Dries fast, dries clear, sticks pretty much everything. So, I said I installed a magnet in this box, and I did. And the magnet is visible when I open this up. It's a little black dot here and here. Now, if I had planned this a little bit better, I might have used flatter magnets and buried them underneath the background paper so you couldn't see them. There is a problem with that, though. You want to make sure you get some really strong magnets because when they're going through a layer or two of cardstock, they don't necessarily have the strength to hold things together. Um, these two magnets are not as flat and they're strong enough but you can see they're just enough to keep the cover down they don't really hold it down so firmly that you have to pry the top off um, and that's okay for this particular box but you see it keeps it all closed up and the box now has been sitting for a week or so with rubber bands around it just to get everything to shape properly so I did some fussy cutting on here I cut out these butterflies they were in one of the papers that was in the kit. All of these, the little words in behind, all of those were in the paper kit. And to give it a little bit of a 3D dimensional level, I cut around the fish here and cut away some of the background paper that was behind it, um, just so it sort of floats on the top of the box. So I'll take you through this page by page. Now when I put this together, I actually opened the whole thing up and started with the very last page and worked my way out. That way I didn't miss any areas. And also, also the sides of this, I just used some of the paper that was in the set and used it as a border around the edges. I didn't need to do that in the top because there was enough of the top paper overhanging. I didn't feel that it needed to be done. And on the back, just to finish it up, I just added a couple of more paper of the elements and one of the chip pieces that were was in the kit so let's open it up 
So on this page, you can see there's some more of those chipboard elements that are here. And as I said, if I had planned this ahead of time, I would have used flatter and stronger magnets so I could have hidden them under the background paper. But I didn't do that in this case. And the page below has this little element. Now this particular scrapbook album has lots of places where people can put pictures, uh, can put journaling, as you'll see. Will I ever use it that way? No. For me, this is done. I'm not going to add anything else more to it. But if you're giving it as a gift, you might want to take that into consideration that people might want to actually use it as a scrapbook. So I did add a little paperclip element. Now this paperclip itself was, I'll show you the back of it, had a little designer top to it. You can't see it because I've glued it to the chipboard. So that element did not come from the paper pack. So that was a little extra element, as was, oops, I don't think I cut my ribbon long enough on here, but I did put on some of these tag-like pieces, the chipboard that did come from the paper pad set. I added, there we go, I added some ribbon to them as well, just as a little, you know, distinguishing feature. And the idea here too with the paper clip is that the person could take little notes, uh, smaller pictures, and clip them all together and just slide it into this side panel. Now I did have to be cautious to make sure that none of my elements hung over where the pages fold, otherwise it wouldn't close. So I did keep that in mind. Here, I've used some more of those smaller chipboard elements, just glued down the side, and again, I cut out an element from one of the pages in the page pack to create this little uh, border piece here. Now, pages like this are designed relatively flat so that someone could add some journaling, a little journaling card, or some little pictures in here. So we'll open up this flap. This one, similarly, as you can see, some of the chipboard elements, I made them a little bit 3D by popping them up on uh, dimensional squares. And I went around all the edges of most of the elements with a little brown archival ink, just again to make them set off from the background paper. So on this side, we have another place, another one of those chipboard tags, and I used some of the words that were actually on some of the papers, cut them out and used them as little border or title treatments. Here, just to break up this space, I just took a thin piece from a sheet of paper, cut it down, uh, darkened it with some ink, and just stuck it down here to break up the monotony of that particular area. This, of course, has little cards, and in these paper packs, you always get cut-aparts, which are elements that uh, can be in large card size, like on here, or smaller ones, which you can just simply cut out, put a little ink around the sides, and usually on the back, they have a pattern of some sort that can easily have some journaling put on top of it, or a picture, or whatever. And I made some of these cards into little elements where I put tape, or glue, depending on what you want. I use double-sided tape, just around three sides of it, so that it had created a little holder for these other cards and for other things that could be slipped in underneath. Um, here on this side, I got a little fancy. Now, there's a little problem I just noticed. I had to go over the fold with this piece, and I noticed that that's not stuck down very well, and it may pop up. I may have to add a little drop of glue in behind that later. But here, I created a little fold-out booklet. Again, I just took some of those elements and they already came in this particular paper pack as a strip. I cut out the whole strip, I accordion fold it, and now we have a little booklet. And again, we have surface for journaling and pictures on the back, and indeed you could put them over top of these elements as well. And I attached a ribbon to the back of this, and this piece I did glue down. I didn't use double-sided tape because this is an element that I know will get opened and closed quite a bit so you want it to be adhered well. So I just used a little piece of ribbon. Where's that piece there? Just pull it in as the enclosure. And the ribbon's not going to get lost because it's permanently glued to the back of this element. It's the center page, one of the bigger cutaway cards. And sometimes these are too big for your actual page. So don't be afraid to cut them down. Um, I cut it down, I rounded the corners, I inked it. You don't doesn't 
readily look like it's only three quarters of the card length. And in this particular case, and there's others in this album, I have cards that have lines meant for journaling, and then another chipboard element and some ribbon. So we open it up a little further. And let me get this one out. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute, but up here, similar thing. Another one of those paper clips that I attached one of the chipboard elements to the top of, and I've clipped two cards to this, which again, those cards could be substituted with a couple of pictures or anything else the recipient would like to do with it. Now in the center section in here, you know we have two fold out booklets, but there are these two pages that cover those up, or one of them actually. So this one, I made a little pocket. Again, just a strip of the decorative paper. I rounded the corners, I inked it, threw in a couple of more cards. And this page, I left blank. Um, I'd like to say I did that on purpose. I didn't, I missed it somehow. However, I'm gonna just leave it this way because again, this is an area here where the recipient could put maybe a larger picture or a larger journaling card. Now the little booklet, that are on either side. Again, I stuck one of those little cards on here and I put this little strip in as well. Now, you could do a little journaling on the back of this, but more or less I put that in there so that the participant or the recipient of this would know that, hey, this works as a pocket. They could uh, stick something else in there if they wished, or they could use that strip, as I said. Um, and if you open it up, another pocket here with two of those cards, and then I left a page blank, again, for them to customize it any way they wish, and another one of these pages where I've got the little pocket and the insert. And I did something similar on this side as well, except on this side, I created a little bit bigger pocket on this one, and I made another little booklet right here. This one doesn't have a tie to it because it's held down by the pocket itself, but again, little accordion fold. This was one strip in the paper pack, I just cut it out and scored it and folded it. And of course the back side has lots of real estate as well. And it just gets, and I use some of those words again, just to, just to break up the picture, add a little interest element and tuck that in here. And this card I mounted on top and had it hang over a little bit so that it gave this kind of effect. Inside a blank page, another journaling card that it's one of those larger ones that I cut down. And again, this same sort of element here, which basically mirrors this element. Now, when I was putting these elements in, I was thinking about how uh, the participant would open up the book. So I did everything with an orientation where this is the top, this is the bottom, and the two sides. Here's another one of the flaps. Um, I just added a flat element. And you open this up, and you have another flat element here. And in this, I took one of these larger cards, and to create this pocket, I just cut it on an angle. I rounded the corners with my corner rounder so it fits in here very nicely, added the words, added a chipboard element, and one of the larger cards, again, they were too big for these pages, so I just went ahead and cut them down, and it looks like it's the whole thing. And on these larger journal cards too, you could put a picture on one side, you could journal on the other, again, whatever the user wishes to do with it. So this flap opens up this way, and on here, another one of those types of pockets where I took the large, larger card and cut it off on an angle, and I slipped in a little another journaling card. And then the bottom page, or the last page, is just simply a strip of the paper um, put in as a... Um, this one is not a pocket, it's more of a belly, uh, what do you call it? It is a pocket, sorry. I did make this one into a pocket, yes. Originally, I was just going to use it as a, uh, as a belly band, but the cards might fall out, so I decided to make it into a pocket. Um, one tip, when you make pockets, it is better, I didn't do it on this one, but it's better if you use your glue for the three sides as opposed to double-sided tape because with the glue it dries solid and the cards won't stick into it once it's dry. In the case of the double-sided tape, if you get the card in here too forced, it, they will stick a little bit. I didn't do that. I should have done that. So do as I say, don't do as I do. So it's all complete, so we can just 
fold it up. And there we have it. We might have it. Yeah, use strong magnets. Those ones are sort of holding, but now that I have more things in them, it's popping up a little bit. Okay, so now you see that's the iCraft box scrapbook. Um, a lot of fun to make, uh, and it's a lot of fun to decorate. I love decorating them, and the more layers, the better, I always think. So that completes this particular series.